Hello listeners and viewers. Welcome to Kaduna State Ministry of Education radio and TV e-learning program designed for our SS3 and other students staying at home due to the coronavirus pandemic. The present administration under the able leadership of His Excellency Malam Nasur Ahmed El Rufai is positioned as always to ensure that under his leadership our students are not left behind in all areas of human endeavors especially education. Kaduna State is the center of learning. Therefore, we want to ensure that our students excel in their forthcoming examinations and beyond. Students and other learners at home are given this opportunity in order to continue learning as education is a continuous process. Different subjects will be taught in this program to assist students to perform excellently in the forthcoming senior school certificates examination being conducted by NECO and WAEC as soon as schools reopen. Teachers making presentations will always provide their names and phone numbers during each presentation and they can be contacted for questions, further explanations and or clarifications. The following numbers and contacts can also be reached for expression of any concern or observation. 090-865-0054 090-865-0054 68362072 our website is www our email education at kdsg.gov.ng or education.kdsg at gmail.com our youtube channel ministry of education kaduna state our twitter handle at kaduna underscore moe or our Facebook page, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State. Stay safe, stay at home, and learn well. Thank you, happy listening, and happy viewing. Good day, students. You are welcome to this e-learning class for today. Today, I'm your civic teacher, Ruth Tonko Godwin. And I am here to continue where we stopped in our last lesson. Our topic is public service. Public service. And the last time we met, we learned about the definition of public service, which we said public service is an organized institution which consists of public servants that provide essential services to the citizens of a country to improve their quality of lives, not for profit making. I take it again for the benefit of those that were not in our class the last time. Public service is an organized institution which consists of public servants that provide essential services to the citizens of a country to improve their quality of lives, not for profit making. And we can also define it as, it is a services that is given to the public by the government to improve the quality of life of the citizen without making any profit. It is a services that is given to the public, not because the government want to make profit out of it, but they are doing it not for the betterment of the government, but for the betterment of you and I. That is what we call public service. And we were able to look at the characteristics of public service, which we said, number one, it consists of public servant. Whenever you go to any organization and you have those that are called public servant, it means it is a public service organization. And I, I, I explained to you the last time we met, I said, you, you should not be confused when they say public servant or they say civil servant, it's still the same thing. The civil servants are working in the public service, which you can call them civil servant or public servant. So my learners, whenever you come across such words in exams or anywhere, don't get confused. Public servants are civil servants. We said another characteristic of public servant is it creates employment through recruitment of people by the commission. 
I cited example of I, your teacher. I am your teacher teaching the public or teaching in the public school. So I do that because I was recruited and that was a source of employment for me. Your doctors in the public hospitals, your nurses, your police and other um, officers that are working in the public service, they get their employment through these institutions that the government have established. Another characteristic is public service has its own fund from the revenue of the government. And I explained to you that since they make no gain, they make no profit, so it's not as if they get money to pay the officers or the people that are working in the public service, but they get their fund through taxes, through the petroleum and other activities that the government engage themselves to make money, and that is where they pay. And I explained to you that if you are to pay for the services of the public service, we, you and I cannot afford it because it is expensive. But government subsidizes it and they pay the people that give you such services through the revenue they obtain. Not through the revenue they obtain from your services, but from the revenue they get through other activities. Another characteristic is it is a non-profitable organization, which is mainly to help citizens in the society. Well, I will not overflow that because I've already explained it to you. Now, we looked at it that despite the fact that government have put all the structures, all the policies in place to make sure that you and I get these services, but there, are, there is a problem. Sometimes we do not enjoy these services the way the government intend it to be. The aims and objectives of the government sometimes is not achieved because of some certain reason. And the reason I mentioned the last time was corruption. Some of the officers are corrupt, not all of them. Some we have bad eggs among them who are corrupt, who ask for bribe before giving you any service and that frustrates the effort of the government or the objective. We also have inconsistency, which I explained to you that because of the change of government from one government to the other, you find out that we tend not to enjoy the services as it is supposed to be because every government come with their policy and those policies may be different from the previous government. Though they come with their own vision and their vision may be different from the other government. And I also mentioned colonial influence, which I said we keep on doing things day in, day out, just the way we were doing it in the colonial era, we are still doing it, which those things are now outdated. Those policies do no longer work. Those activities do no longer work, do no longer serve us, but we still do it, which also is a problem. We also look at indiscipline. We said some of the, 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 the public servants are indisciplined. They display all sorts of discipline activities, coming to the work late, play truancy, and don't even come to, school, to the office at all, but they only receive salary, which also pose a problem to the public service. We also have lack of invention, which is like the issue of colonial uh, problem, which they, they, they do not do, invent doing new things. And I explained to you that some officers who are fresh from school and have the potential, but because they are boss, we want them to do the thing that is used to doing. Even when they want to bring new invention, they will be told that that is not how we've been doing it. And I, we also look at the area of appointment. We said some, most, some of the appointments are not made by merit, but by who you know, through, through political affiliation and also nepotism. While, Alanas, I'm happy we've been able to summarize and recap 
where we stopped the last time. And I promise you that when we come today, we are going to continue. We are going to see how we can solve this problem. We've been able to identify the problems that have been frustrating our effort or frustrating the effort of the government to achieve their aims and objective of public service that make the public service to be ineffective and inefficient. Now, let's discuss together ways of solving this problem. What are the ways? Number one, training. Why do we think training can help? Training can help in this problem of public service. All new and old staff employed in the service should be given training or refresher courses to enable them to have the practical knowledge of modern administration. I take it again. All new and old staff employed in the services should be given training or refresher courses to enable them have the practical knowledge of modern administration. You remember in our problem, we were, when we looked at the problem, we said lack of invention. We said colonial influence. And that beat them to do the same thing year in, year out. But if they are sent on training, there are new ways of doing things now. There are new ways of administration. Even the facilities that they use in the offices. You find out that you go to some offices, you see they are still using manual typewriter. And even if you bring computer for some of them to use, they will tell you that we don't know how to use it or this is not what we have been using. So when you give them training, they will now understand and also use that new method. And with that, you find out that things will be moving well. And you find out that this bureaucracy will be cut off. Another way of improving it is political education. Political education should be given from school up to the public servant to enable the public servant to be politically neutral persons so as to discharge their services without bias. Now, our learners, that is why we are taking on this civic education. We want to give you a civil knowledge of what you are supposed to do to your society, what your society is supposed to do to you, how you can be an effective citizen of your society. So if that knowledge is obtained right from school up to when you will graduate and get a job and work for the government, you find out that you will understand the aims and objectives, and you'll be politically neutral. So any government of the day, you will give that government your cooperation, and you do what you are supposed to do at when you are supposed to do, and how you are supposed to do. And with that, every citizen in the society will enjoy the services of the public service. Then we now have public complaint commission. This body will be used to entertain complaints from the public on any services of the public servant so as to investigate and address any shortcoming in the public service. public complaint commission it's just that some people don't even understand are not aware of such services with such kind of body when there is any lapses or any problem in the public service you take your complaint to them and when you take your complaint to them they write it down they investigate and address it and when each and every one of us is knowledgeable about that and we give our complaint, they will be able to correct the system because they will address the issue.
punish those they are supposed to punish, advise those they are supposed to advise, you find out that the public servant will gear up and stand up to their responsibilities. Another way of improving public service is this. My learners, when you look at it, we can say reward public servant. Those public servants that have good performance should be rewarded through promotion, recommendation, financial rewards, and so on and so forth. At least we know that it is not all the public servants that are bad eggs. We have the good ones who are loyal to their work, patriotic citizens of the society. Now, what are we going to do to motivate them to do well, to do better? so that the objectives and aims of government will be achieved. is by rewarding them. If you reward them through promotion, through recommendation, through giving them financial incentive, you will find out that they will give in their best because every human being you know needs motivation. But if they find out that even while they are giving their best, and they are not growing in their career, there is no any reward. Before you know it, they will also uh, follow or join the bad wagons. So one of the ways of solving these shortcomings or problems of public service is by rewarding the public servant. We also have another ways we can improve the public service is by punishment of the, those public servants that are corrupt, lazy to their work, and also display indiscipline acts. We looked at it that they are one of the bad eggs and the problem of the public service. So if they are punished, others will take as example. For example, if I'm as one of the public servants, I do not take my work serious. I am do, uh, being engaged in truancy, I am found wanting in area of discipline, corruption, one thing or the other. And if I am punished, maybe by relieving me out of my job or delaying my, my uh, salary or uh, demoting me in my uh, cadre, you find out that even if another person is having the intention of following the bad wagon, he will retrace his Step because he will not want to be punished. Just as the going says that when the frog in front fall in a pit, others at the back take precaution. So if we want to solve this problem of shortcomings of public uh, servant, we have to punish those that are found wanting. Another way we can solve this problem is public service should embrace new and modern ways of administration we should brace up to the new method of administration if we do that there will be efficiency and effectiveness in public service and you remember we talked about the problem of recruitment if we want to solve the problem of public service recruitment should be based on merit and not political affiliation or nepotism it should be based on who you know it shouldn't be based on public uh, uh, political affiliation, but who knows what he can do should be allowed to do it. It is, should be based on what I can do, that I should be allowed to man an office based on my uh, uh, professionalism, based on my seriousness of my job. When that is done, you find out that the public service will be improved. Now, my learners, I know by now you've understood what we've been learning. We've been able to look at the definition of public service. We've been able to see the characteristics of public service. We've been able to see reasons for the shortcoming in the public service. And after seeing the reason, we're able to come up with solution, the profound solution on the ways of improving the public service. My learners, I know you've understood. Now, before I go, I'm leaving you with an assignment. And the assignment is, number one, define public service.
Number one, define public service. Two, mention and explain three characteristics of public service. Mention and explain three characteristics of public service. Number three, give any four solution to the shortcomings of the public service. Give any four solutions to the shortcomings of the public service. You can call me on the following number or you WhatsApp on the following number. No text messages. The name remain Ruth Tonko Godwin, 080-240-40570. Ruth Tonko Godwin, 080-240-40570. Zero. My learners, till we meet again, stay home, stay safe, wash your hands. I want you to be safe so that we we'll continue to learn together. Till we meet next time. Bye-bye.